Welcome to CNN Business Traveller. I'm Richard Quest, this month reporting from Japan. And this is the famous Dotenbori district, the hub of nightlife in Osaka. If there is one country that sends a shiver down the spine of the financial executives, it's the thought of sending business travellers to Japan. The popular perception is costs go through the roof. Well, as we are going to prove on this month's show, sending your staff here needn't break the bank. In fact, you can be a business traveller in Japan on a budget. Coming up on this month's show... Uh, 22,000 yen per day? You're not serious. Japan on a budget and not a backpacker in sight. Keeping corporate expenses down, the rent incentive scheme to bring business to Osaka. And I try my hand at the ancient craft of making sushi. <coughs> the vinegar! And make a hash of it. Hotel bills, taxes, entertaining, receipts, the bane of the traveller's life, even more so in Japan, where you can't read the writing and the numbers seem frighteningly high. We're here to show you how you can, of course, do it far more reasonably. And my expert is Steve Crane. He's been bringing business travellers to Japan for 15 years. He'll make sense of this lot. I think he'll have his work cut out. This is the Japan most of us imagine. A-list shops with price tags and rents to match. I can't see many bargains here, but I can see plenty of cyclists on the pavement. Wickedly dangerous. What about the perception that Japan is an expensive place to do business here as a, as a business traveller? Well, that perception is definitely there, and I come across that, but I would argue that that perception is not exactly accurate. It doesn't have to be such an expensive place to do business at all. So how much should I allow myself as a per diem travelling here? What are you going to give me? What, to do it on a budget? On a budget. It's very crucial that we do it on a budget. OK. Uh, 22,000 yen per day? 22,000. Mm -hmm. How convenient that works out at just about $200 a day. Hand it over. Does this include my hotel? Oh, yeah, sure, of course. You're not serious. Totally serious. There we go. 10, 20, 100. And I'm not sleeping on the street. You won't need to sleep on the street. 22,000. You bet. Time to start some business. Now, okay. I'll call us a taxi. I oh. should be able to get one on the street. Uh, yeah. Richard, no, no, no. What? It's the uh, subway for us. What? We're doing it on a budget, remember? The subway? Yeah, the subway. Just no, here. I'll never be able to navigate that. You will. Come on, I'll show you. Your day, uh... Yodayabashi station. Yodayabashi. That's it. Let's go. I've lost already. But not for long. I've spotted something that's going to make life much easier. The English button. Right. English? Correct. An all-day card or a ticket? No, we don't need an all-day card. Just get a ticket. That's fine. And the bill one. That's it. You've got it. Let's get the card in there. There's my ticket. ticket. Remember, the machine says it'll do it in English. The trains are regular, and there's enough English to get me by. Truth is, it's not that daunting on the Japanese subway. Back in the air, and it's time again to get down to business. All this saving of money has a purpose. It means I've now got cash to spare for when it really matters. For instance, entertaining at lunch. These are my guests. Hello, Richard Quest. Nice, nice to meet you. you. Nice, to, Richard, nice meet to meet you. you. How nice to meet you. Shall we have lunch? Oh, I'm nice buying. Oh, really? This is more than just a business lunch. These are the experts, and I'm about to get a lesson on etiquette of entertaining in Japan. Would you agree with my premise that there is a difference between the way Westerners view a business lunch and the way Japanese view a business lunch. Would you agree? In Japan, a lunch is a way of negotiating to understand the other party, to understand what their needs are and how they want to do business, understanding their culture. More emphasis is put on that rather than the actual contract negotiation. <laughs> what would you recommend? Oh. And I don't mean in terms of food. I mean, right, right. Yeah, <laughs> what, what would you recommend is being 
the, the rule of thumb. Because people can be terrified when faced with Japanese food that they're not familiar with. To be very open-minded, and if that means eating things that you don't like, then, then so be it. I mean, I think that's what sets up, I mean, that sets successful business people from not successful business people in the way. Successful business people can really eat anything, right? Sooner or later, I've got to ask it. Every Westerner's favorite, the chopsticks question. There's nothing more endearing than uh, when you come to Japan, when you try everything, you make a valid attempt mm. at, uh, at eating all of this. Mm. Uh, it certainly gains respect in the eyes of your, uh, your business partners. Yes. And that includes right down to the chopsticks. What will offend? What will really offend? How can I put my big foot in it without necessarily even realizing it? Um, one is to give an ultimatum, particularly oh, sure. in this environment. Give me an example. Um, you know, if you can't do something about that price, then I'm afraid we're not going to be able to do business with you. Right. I mean, that's sort of the ultimate no-no. Uh, any, any relationship you had built up to that point is probably washed. What's the one thing physically, if I eat, <laughs> that would just be a... I mean, many things physically. They well, go on. Do, right? I mean, one, and I, I mean, I'm almost loath to actually do it. May I, may I do it? But I really don't. But if you, uh, you know, if you did something well, you want to you want to check the watch. So maybe you put you do one of these things. And again, I'm really that's quite offensive, isn't it? I even hate doing that. Doing this is just um, no good. It's All right. Because it's related to uh, death. Lunch set me back okay. four thousand yen. When you're not entertaining, this is a much cheaper option for the midday snack. Noodles, right. Steve took me to one of the many local noodle bars. You can pick up a delicious, freshly cooked and simple bowl of noodles for just a couple of dollars. Let's take a look at how my day's spending has stacked up so far. The hotel, a business style hotel, was 12,000 yen. Subways and the odd taxi, about 500 yen. My expensive business lunch, that was dear. It cost 4,000. My late afternoon noodles were almost nothing at all, a couple of hundred. My local telephone calls and the call charges on my rented mobile could be up to another thousand yen. I've also allowed a thousand yen or so for incidentals. So my total is around 18,000 yen or a hundred and fifty dollars. I've done it with cash to spare and you know, I don't feel I've stinted on anything. So, Steve was right. I was able to do Osaka on $200 a day, including accommodation. However, if things had gone wrong, there was an alternative. It's called the Media Cafe. Come, I'll show you. It's the place to stay that's not a hotel. Hello. Can I have a... Can I have a... The room. Oh, OK. It's all in Japanese, but I think I can probably work this out. Thank you. A bed for the night that's strictly the last resort for the weary business traveller. There's plenty of food. Drinks. Cozy, isn't it? But it does come with all mod cons. I've even managed to splash out and get a double room. Ten hours, including computers and DVD player, for just 4,600 yen. If everything had gone wrong, this would have been the perfect solution. Coming up after the break, how to keep your corporate expenses on budget in Osaka.